Hi, this is Julia Whitup with Talk Story Media, and I have with me this morning Lorelai Schmile. And um, tell us a little bit about your work, Lorelai. Hi, Julia. I'm so happy to be Hi. here. Oh. So I do a number of different things. Um, the main things that I do are intuitive eye readings and body psychology. I apply that in coaching as well as metaphysical readings. And I also run metaphysical events, wellness events for lots of people. Oh, wow. Okay. That sounds interesting. And where are you located? I'm outside Seattle, Washington. I'm in a small town called North Bend. So I live up in the foothills in a log cabin. I see the logs behind you. <laughs> How nice. <laughs> okay. Well, and so the eye readings, you look into people's eyes and you can tell things about them? I can. And I actually think that everyone can. So probably everyone's listening familiar with the phrase, eyes are a window to the soul. Yeah. And a way that we can all get a sense of how that's true for us is if you imagine when you've met someone with dark sunglasses, right, and you can't see someone's eyes, there's that sense that so much is missing. And then as soon as you see their eyes, there's so much there. Yeah, but most of us can't articulate that. <laughs> right. So for most of us, it's subconscious or intuitive, and we don't realize that we're doing it at all, and we certainly don't understand what it is that we see. So I use a set of archetypes to describe what I see in people. I call those archetypes thrive types, archetypes for thriving. Okay. And that way I'm able to describe very explicit things about people. Like what? Tell us some of the. Yeah, sure. So <laughs> one thing I recognize in people are talents. I use a set of seven talents to describe what our talents are, what we naturally contribute and share, what we value, what we can't help but contribute. Um, so each person has three of them. They come in an order of priority. And there are also a set of growth lessons for these talents. So that's one of the most important traits. And then I also look at a person's pacing or rhythm, the speed at which they integrate and share and move in the world. Uh -huh. I look at how we make decisions, how we communicate, what motivates us. And you combine all of by those. looking at their eyes. I do. And I'm, I'm so, I think that we all see so much in, in a split second, not even a whole second with each other. Um, but I definitely can see these things in like less than a second or a few seconds. And then sometimes um, I say we are who we are. And sometimes the way life happens, we end up learning to hide who we are. So we can pick up things called masks. I just think of them as, you know, false friends. Um, but, but it can but, also be, yeah, that we hold something back or overexpress something. So part of my job is to see through those masks. Wow. Okay. And can you do that online? Oh, definitely, yes, yes. So, I mean, it's great to be with someone live, but by video, this is great. I've been using um, Zoom actually for, you know, I think over 10 years because it's always had such great video quality. And I can see it in photos in people. So like for me, I, this is part of how it's so great for applying it. And I say, there are a couple other traits I see too. I see how we protect ourselves, I call them our defense. And then I also see worldview, which is a set of consciousness lessons. So for example, if someone wants to just understand themselves, I like to see photos of them, but I also like to see photos of their parents or anyone else that helped raise them. And that's a way that it helps me identify what the masks are. So oh. typically when we're little kids, right, we do what we need to to get love and attention. So mm -hmm. our parents or our caregivers usually have a big influence. And so by seeing the parents and getting a sense of the parents from just, sometimes all I have is one photo. Um, if I'm juggling like with the talents, you know, like which are the three is that, you know, there are four and I can't quite tell. When I see that a parent has a, a, a strong expression of one of those talents, it makes me think more likely that maybe that's the mask and that the other three are what's true of the person. Uh, then I ask, I ask questions to verify. Yeah, of course. Wow. That is so cool. And what else in, did... Well, I want to say too, that it's, um, I, I don't necessarily think that it's my perspective that really matters. I think it's each person's perspective and their own experience of themselves that matters so much. I'm bringing in a different lens by which we're not used to looking at ourselves, imagining like an understanding ourselves. Uh -huh. when, when I'm touching into a talent that's really true for someone, 
usually they can just, they can realize, oh, I do feel so much more energy and joy when I do that thing. Uh And also like, I have a talent that's connected to all these other traits about someone. And they're like, oh yeah, I like that. And I like that. And I like that. And I love those things. And that's important. And, and so all together they're like, oh yeah. And they realize that, yeah. So wherever, for a person, wherever we feel energy and joy and so connected to ourselves, that's often what is authentic. Mm -hmm. And so that would match with something I would see in someone's eyes typically. And for the things that I see as masks, um, usually those are the things that have us be exhausted and tired and low energy. And so really we can all tell this ourselves if we listen to where we feel alive and where we feel a lot of energy. It's just most of us don't. (laughs) And when you're so used to a certain mask, it might be hard to feel that though. Right. And also our society tells us that what has value is hard work. And that completely sends us in the direction of our masks, not in the direction of authenticity. I know, because I always wanted to be an artist and I thought, oh, we can't make any money at that. So, so I right. Know. And chances are you heard that somewhere. <laughs> uh-huh. Constantly you hear that, the starving artist. <laughs> I didn't want to yeah. starve. So... <laughs> I say, and there are all kinds of ways I can apply this because I can see it in photos. Wow, that is so cool. And what was the other thing you do? Well, so I do body psychology and and I connect the body psychology with the eye reading. So I can't help but see things in people's eyes when I look at them. It's sort of automatic for me now. But body psychology in general, it's where our body gives us information all the time, even Mm -hmm. something as little as an itch. Like if we have an itch and we go to scratch it on our cheek, Mm -hmm. I know when I see someone do this or when I do this myself, this is part of the body that's generally connected to the feeling of anger. I don't think anger is bad. I think anger, healthy anger is just connected to our yes and our no. Like I want and I don't want. You mean the cheek is or the It's the jaw. So the jaw, head, neck, shoulders, and back. So if someone has an itch here on the side of their jaw, on their cheek, it's their jaw, or the side of their head, or they feel tight and tired on their shoulders or their back hurts. All these are signals to me that probably the person's feeling some yes or no that they're not expressing. Mm. So for me, if I do this, right, it's like, like you probably think of it as, oh, the person's thinking like, because we often see people like do this and they're looking away and it's as if they're thinking, but probably what's really going on underneath is they feel a yes or a no about that thing that they're thinking about. And Uh then do they express it? So for me, this is a cue for me as a human to notice, am I, you know, what do I feel? And am I expressing what I want? Am I creating what I want? Uh And I use this for things like job interviews to see if people then, like when I ask them, well, so one of the, one of the ways I apply this work is I do um, job interviews to help find people that are great fit for the role they're applying for and a great fit for the culture and the team they work with. Uh And so when I ask someone a question about the time they had a challenging situation, and they, they're thinking back about it as they answer and they scratch here and they talk about how it was hard and like not something they wanted. Then for me, I'm like, oh, they're congruent. Uh-huh. But if they do this and they're just like, oh, and it was all good and it seems really superficial, uh-huh. then it sounds superficial. And I know they're touching themselves in a way that doesn't quite seem congruent. It's oh, just extra okay. evidence that something's off. But you so in coaching- You learn that in your training because that doesn't, that's not intuitive to me. That somebody- <laughs> it's not. But so what would be intuitive I'll give you is so if you think about um, so chances are you've had an animal in your life or some human in your life that's no longer here Uh and as you think about them what do you notice in your body Um, I notice I look down immediately right and and can you sense any part of your body that shifts or moves or where you have a little bit of sensation happening Everything seems to happen in my stomach. <laughs> yeah. And so, it's, so, so typically sadness is connected to the throat and the high chest here. And so we often curl in this way and you're looking down as a little bit of the curling in over that mm-hmm. part of the body. And now that I've mentioned that part of the body, you might notice like a softness or a heaviness here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the stomach is generally connected to fear. So depending on who you were thinking of, you might also have fear connected to experiences with that person or fear that they're gone or animal that they're gone. And fear actually has like four different expressions. So the stomach is a simple place. But so I use it for people to help people get more in touch with their own feelings and emotions. 
you know, to help honor themselves. Mm -hmm. And then I use it for practical things like hiring interviews, but then also with the four types of fear, if there's, and I'm just going to grab something off my desk. If there's a snake, Mm -hmm. it's great to feel scared and to do something about that snake. (laughs) But often we humans, like there's nothing. We're just imagining that there's something scary and it's not helpful to be caught in fear. Right. So I teach things like fear melters that Katie Hendricks terms, or I call them fear antidotes. And I'll give you an example of one of them. So if I'm imagining something in the future that might go wrong and I'm like scared about it and I'm thinking about it and like, so this is a fear that's called flee and humans don't typically run away. We flee into our head. And so thinking about the future is a flea move. And so the antidote or the melter is to do sumo pose like a sumo wrestler. Uh-huh. So it brings my energy here now. Yeah. I'm not up there thinking about that thing. So I'm right here in the moment. Uh-huh. So I'm much more able to be present with what's here at the moment. And maybe there's some action step I want to take about that situation right now. Uh-huh. And by grounding my energy, I'm able to find that and not get lost in the imaginary fear. Okay. Wow. So that's an example that's- of body. <laughs> body psychology yeah and so it's it's useful for me for reading people and seeing what's happening with them but then also i teach people things like these fear antidotes and then they can use them themselves to get unstuck from fear so they're more present and more able to be responsive and more able to have what they want in their life wow that is very cool but they don't even know that they have in fear or they may not Yeah, like as I talk about four types of fear, you're probably just not even aware, like four types of fear. No, what are the others? So that was flee or flight, Uh huh. right? Where animals often run away and humans will just like lean backwards or like go up into their head and think about the past or the future or just something different. So flee and then fight. So right, flight, uh-huh. fight. So it can be like, that, but it can also be intellectually, intellectual and pokey, like oh, that's wrong or... You know, mm-hmm. like, why? Is it? So that's fighting. <laughs> Start arguing with them. Right. And sometimes we fight with ourselves. Oh, why'd you do that? You shouldn't have. Uh. Right? <laughs> okay. It's all fight. Mm-hmm. And it comes from fear. It comes from um, a threat, a real or an imagined threat. Okay. And then another one is, is um, freeze. So that looks like, <gasps> right? Yeah. And so with, with freeze, there's often a tightening of the muscles, a bulging of our eyes and our, our uh, breathing shallows or, or stops almost. Okay. Right. And then the fourth one is faint. And faint. so faint, faint can look like getting ditzy and spacey and not being able to think clearly. Or some people also just do like a, like all their energy just drops. Yeah. I think I have that one a lot. <laughs> I'm and, just going to faint. <laughs> and people typically have combos. And so my favorite, though, there are just two different things to do from the faint. So Katie Hendricks teaches love scoops, which is like imagining a big pool of love and scooping it onto oneself. Uh-huh. And the thing that works better for me is to do what I call love hold. So I put my arms together and it's a, it's a resistance move. So I'm pulling in with one arm and pushing out with the other. So I have my forearms. And it can also be done with the hands. And so to me, it's to get the muscles kind of turned on all around in the arms and the shoulders. Mm -hmm. And I think of it as like hugging myself in some ways. But for me, this even allows me to tighten my muscles more. And um, it gives me the sense of like, I'm not alone. It's like, I'm here with me. Like, it don't just feel like, I I feel safer. And it also, as I'm exercising these muscles, it, it literally, if I'm fainting, it's bringing more blood up to my head. Right. So and you're Are any of those hand signals helpful? I know I saw, read about those and I actually saw that um, Prince Harry and Meghan were holding their hands in like a triangle at one of their interviews. Yeah. And I read I just that around you or something. Do you know anything about that? I don't, I don't know that in particular, but yeah, I think there are all kinds of like in Indian like culture, there are all kinds of different um, I'm forgetting what they're called now, but um, yeah, all kinds of symbols with the hands that have energetic impacts. Yeah. By which two fingers you put together or something. Yeah, I think there are all kinds of, um, I, I'm, I'm forgetting what the name is, but there's a name for all the different hand movements. It's kind of like, hand, I think of it as like hand yoga and it's so where it energetically impacts the body. So, yeah. Wow, okay. 
But so I do, and you can do like the sumo that I was showing mm -hmm. and the love hold at the same time. So if one is fleeing and fainting, mm -hmm. thinking about that thing out there and getting all spacey, mm -hmm. yeah, one can sumo and do this at the same time. And then one's present in the moment. So okay. less scared. Yeah. Well, that'll be handy to know. <laughs> yeah. So what I do is I, so I'm able to see someone's eyes and see who they are, what their natural gifts are, their purpose, and then help them make practical choices that, that have them be in line with their purpose. It might be about career path or relationships or matchmaking, all kinds of things like that. And but then see, there are lessons. Uh huh. Cool. I say there are lessons of right being the best of who we are. And so I often use the body psychology to help people shift through the lessons. Part of it is an intellectual awareness of the lessons and seeing how they can shift some way of thinking or open to something new or practice some new activity. But it's, and the body psychology is really how we shift. The only thing really that gets in our way is fear. So the wow. fear, of fear antidotes do a lot. Can you see my eyes well enough to tell me anything right now, just as a demo? Sure. Yeah. So I can turn on I look another at light too, if you need. No, no, I don't need another light. Okay. So when I look at your eyes, well, so I'll give you an example of a couple of things. So one is, um, I'm wondering if movement has been really important to you during your life. Like you generally don't like to sit still for too long. You like to get up and move. Is that true? Yeah, pretty okay. true. And I just wonder, so you have a lot of action in your communication. So that's one thing. And then if I look at your talents. Uh -oh. Let me turn that off. Okay, we got something going on. No, oh, I should have put this away somewhere. Sorry. And that's not making it. It's okay. <laughs> I know. It's like when we want to turn it off, right? We can't find it. <laughs> I thought you just had so, to push. Anyway. It's great. So when I look at your eyes, so I feel more emotional expression in your eyes in general than I do in mine. So if people like look at mine, if I do, I'm just a very simple, calm, like of me. Mm -hmm. So if they're looking at your eyes, there's more emotion. There's more feeling that comes through your eyes. And I can feel just a bit more of the energy coming out of your eyes where my eyes and people won't be used to looking at this, but my eyes are drawing energy in more mm. than yours are. Okay. And so the trait that has the energy coming out of your eyes more and where I have more of the feeling emotional expression, it's a talent that's about vision, inspiration, passion, motivation. So it's more likely that you see not only what's here, but that you also see what's possible mm -hmm. and that you love to inspire and motivate people to stretch and reach for what's possible. And it's by using emotions to pull people forward. I do like that. Yeah. So, so part of the gifts about this, right, is it can see what's possible and get people aligned towards something and get movement to happen. Um, it, it, it trusts people kind of like um, helps people see more of themselves than they're able and helps them feel more confident. Um, it can get a whole group, right? It recognizes when a group isn't aligned and can do something to help get them there. Some of the challenges of this one, I say they're the optimist. Some mm -hmm. of the challenges of this though, and, and you're not in these lessons anymore, but some of the earlier lessons is people can get too stuck on that possibility, like a dog going after a bone and they won't give it up and they can be judgmental that it should be here now. <laughs> yeah. right? So they have strong opinions often. So like, as you look back in your life, that may have been the case. Mm -hmm. So when someone has strong opinions, I'm able then to help recognize them and see them for, but I get, it's like, you just, there's something that you really want and you know that something's just not, not, not the way it could be here. And it really bothers you and they feel seen and they feel met in that way, instead of just having someone push back against their judgment and they're able to relax more. And then there are ways of helping them step into like that they see that difference is a gift and helps them get more connected to that people are simply here now sometimes and they can't step as big or as fast. Right. And sometimes that creates, you know, they have fear. What if other people can't step fast enough or fear of what if I'm not contributing my value enough if I can't get them to step? Or it might just be sadness underneath of, oh, they're only here and they can only go that fast. Mm -hmm. And connecting with more of those feelings is part of what softens the person and takes them out of that, so much of that judgment too. Oh, that's a good idea. Wow. Wow, this is really nice. Well, I am, thank you so much for being on the show today. Oh, you're and, so welcome. I wanted to say too about your eyes, right? So oh, part of okay. what you do in doing this and having the community and doing interviews and bringing people to others, mm -hmm. you're doing the you're doing the, the gift of this talent of like helping align and pull together and elevate and lift everyone. So cool. <laughs> and do you think you'll be able to come to Shaman's Camp this year? 
I am hopeful that I will. I think that we'll be able to travel. And so I think there's a okay. good chance I can come. I'm going to go ahead and offer some uh, virtual options for people who can't make it here. But we're really looking forward to seeing all these fabulous people here in life. <laughs> And I, I love the area. I know the area in general well. So yeah. I oh, you do? There, so. Okay. That I, lived in, um, I lived in Colorado for 14 years. Yeah. Oh, you did? Oh, that's nice. Okay. Yes. We're looking forward to seeing you in August. Great. Okay. Thanks for being with us today. You're so welcome. Oh, one more thing. Could you just tell us your website? So if people want to get a hold of you. Yeah, sure. So the best way to find me is lorelishamayo.com. It's L-A-U-R-E-L-I-S-H-I-M-A-Y-O.com. And from there, you can see all my other websites. Thrivewise is coaching and Thrive Types has information on my eye readings. And then MeWe Fairs has information on all the fairs and events that I run. And they're all online right now. And hopefully they'll be in person again sometime soon. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You're so welcome.